Well, for more on the border wall debate and the U.S. shutdown, I'm joined by Lancaster University Professor Dr. Robert Gutscher. Robert, it's great to have you on The World tonight. And were you expecting the results that came from the Senate overnight? Well, the votes, yes. I mean, we, we kind of knew that the votes that were being put forward were not going to pass. They were, they were test votes to see uh, just that, if they would uh, have enough support uh, to pass. Um, what we're not, uh, what we are surprised about, quite frankly, is Donald Trump kind of losing a bit of this battle, um, saying he would postpone the uh, State of the Union address. That's not uh, a position that Donald Trump is used to, particularly when he might be losing to uh, a, woman, a, a woman. What we've seen is a lot of, you know, anti-woman rhetoric coming from the White House and from his campaign when he was running for president. And so it is a double slap in the face for Donald Trump that he can't get this policy through, uh, and he's losing to Nancy Pelosi. Why do you think he might be softening his stance? Could it be do, to do with the public pressure that's being put on him? Well, we are seeing some breaking of rank within uh, the Republican Party or the Republican seats in the, in the Senate and in Congress. Uh, we're seeing that the pressure from constituents really are starting to have representatives uh, answering some hard questions about why people aren't getting their, their welfare. Uh, American Indian tribes aren't getting food that is part of the treaties that they have with the U.S. government when they gave up uh, their land. This is starting to affect people, not just 800,000 federal workers who aren't getting paid, but security at airports, uh, people's daily lives. And at some point, uh, you know, people are worried about maintaining their positions of power in Congress. So they have to break rank. Um, and I think Donald Trump is a little concerned about, about seeing that expand. Well, he boasts about never conceding defeat. We've seen um, him giving in a little bit with Nancy Pelosi. Do you think he could give in a little more? We'll be forced to in the coming days or weeks. Well, he's being pushed in that direction uh, more than he has in his presidential uh, life so far. So I, I do think that we're seeing some more concession. He's con conceding on not having a wall and turning it into a steel fence. Uh, but the Democrats are also kind of in a sticky situation here. They have a very strong record of voting for border security, uh, increasing the number of guns on the border to keep people out, uh, increasing the funds for building walls in the past. So their position uh, is, is, uh, is, is one of humanitarianism at this point. But they're not explaining why in the past they voted for these types of policies. Some of the, the ranking members of the Democratic Party voted for things that Donald Trump is wanting now. But this is really a referendum on Donald Trump's presidency, and, and Democrats are going to be standing strong. So Donald Trump may have to concede more than he ever imagined. Uh, on this particular point. Meanwhile, is there a way of reopening federal agencies while negotiation over the wall continues? So there are conversations about uh, kind of opening up some of these agencies. Certainly, there are concerns about security. There are concerns about international uh, re you know, relations, uh, surprisingly, from the Trump administration, concerned about how well the State Department is able to, to operate, for instance. Um, Washington uh, works on the backs of everyday workers. They're not all politicians. They're not all wearing suits and ties. Uh, they are people who work in offices, people who sometimes have to carry a couple jobs to make their, their, their paychecks uh, happen. And so I think there are some concerns on both sides of the aisle about those everyday lives. Um, so I think when, when we see some movement in opening up some, some offices, uh, that, that will help. But, but really, for the rest of the people who are out of work right now, they've missed several paychecks, and they're moving into missing another paycheck. Uh, they're not able to pay their rent or put food on their tables. Um, and so the longer you know, that happens and the louder the voices get, uh, that's going to put even greater pressure on, on getting this done sooner. Well, Robert, how much uh, weight do you give to rumors that Donald Trump's preparing, preparing to declare a national emergency over this? Yeah, he's, he's gone back and forth on if he has the authority uh, to, to use funds for this particular uh, purpose. I mean, we're, we're talking about $7 billion, uh, you know, in, in some estimates. Uh, that's a lot for national security that has to do not with, with moving troops and, and immediate danger to people's lives but, but, or, you know, a natural disaster or something like that, but to building a structure uh, along a political border. Uh, that would be an unprecedented use of, of this sort of national emergency. Um, but he hasn't gone 100 percent with that. He's, he's, he's waffled on that point. So I think there's some concern within the White House about if he has the legal authority for that sort of use.
But in two weeks, if this continues to go on, uh, we may see him take that uh, or another drastic step to make this happen. Well, if that does eventuate, what would the reaction in Congress be? I think surprise. Uh, you know, Donald Trump has taken a lot of different uh, steps in his presidency, moved things in different directions. He, you know, his, his goal was to drain the swamp, which was to uh, do things not as usual. And so that's part of the challenge for Congress is what side do they, do they land on and how is Donald Trump going to react? If he goes in the direction of using a national emergency, uh, legislators aren't going to know how to respond to that. I mean, they're working on strategies on how to respond, but it'll be something that they've never seen the likes of. Uh, certainly in the last several presidencies, this sort of rogue behavior from the from the White House. And so it's going to create some sort of stalemates uh, in, in negotiations if he goes that route, because they're not going to know how to respond through their legislative means as they normally would. And Robert, just finally, one more than a month in, are we any closer to uh, to ending this government shutdown and stalemate? You know, when you get when you get one step in the direction, it seems like we're going two steps uh, behind. Now, this has turned into uh, you know, a fight between Nancy Pelosi and, and Donald Trump, uh, him stopping her from from using military aircraft to to travel to see troops and to, to do her job that she needs to do as Speaker of the House. Um, I, I don't know that we're any any closer. I mean, we've gone through shutdowns before, never anything like this. And, and Donald Trump's so unpredictable that uh, we are maybe looking at another month. Um, I don't think we're looking at another week. I think we're looking at um, you know, somewhere between a few weeks and, and possibly another month of this. Professor Robert Gucci, thank you so much for joining the world tonight. Sure.